Let's take a closer look at what happened at the 24 hours of Daytona 2025. Daytona marks the first race of the third year of the new hypercar formula, and it started with a shock. Porsche had to change multiple batteries because of high voltage problems. When the BMW stopped in qualifying because of a problem with the hybrid system, it looked like the race could end in a disaster. The hybrid system consists of standard components, which are the same for everyone. The electric motor comes from Bosch, the high voltage battery from Ford SQ0, which was William's advanced engineering before. An emergency meeting was organized with all LMDH manufacturers, IMSA, Bosch and Ford SQ0. The strange thing was that cars and hybrid systems are in their third year now and didn't change in general, while they were pretty reliable last year. So why are problems coming up now? And why do only Porsche and BMW have problems? The parties put every option on the table in order to find a solution. One hint was that BMW and Porsche are both using flat plane V8 engines, which create vibrations which caused problems with the hybrid system in the past. Porsche even wanted to change from a flat plane crankshaft to a cross plane crankshaft in order to reduce vibrations and improve reliability. Check out my other video for more on this. In the end, they didn't make the change as reliability improved without the update, but also BMW was thinking about changing their crankshaft. Acura is using a V6, Cadillac a cross plane V8, and they don't have these problems. But Lamborghini, on the other hand, has the same concept, but they have other issues to fix. So, in the end, Porsche decided not to use the brand new batch of hybrid components for 2025. Instead, they took used parts from 2024, which were still okay on mileage, together with older spare parts from Bosch and Ford SQ0. They also adapted their processes on track to focus on hybrid lifetime. So now, after they won the race, they still don't know what caused the issues. Maybe the old batch fixed it or they were just lucky. So this problem still needs to be understood for Sebring. Now let's take a closer look at the BOP rating for Daytona, so we can understand the performance of cars on track better. The rating is pretty simple compared to WEC races. Everyone gets the full power of 520 kW, except the Cadillac, who has to deal with 20 kW less and up to 30 kg more than the competition. Because of their bad performance in the past, Lamborghini gets the lowest weight, as well as the BMW, which also explains the competitiveness of the BMWs. For Lamborghini, however, the weekend was a disaster. We already talked about the not ideal design of the Ligier Lambo in my earlier videos. Check them out with the links below. Last year, they were openly thinking about stopping the program because they were not competitive. Around Christmas, they decided to still run the SC63, but only in IMSA. By that time, the experienced Iron Lynx team, which operated the car, already left the sinking ship and now Lamborghini formed their own operating team, Automobili Lamborghini Squadra Corsa. In practice sessions and quali, they have been the slowest hypercar again, and in the 24 hour race, they had to retire already after one hour with an overheating engine. So, it really doesn't look good for the Lamborghini program, which should have shown Lamborghini's engineering competence after they rejected Ford's to use their sister company's basis, the Porsche 963. Acura and Porsche had a slightly higher weight, but were still the most competitive cars and filled the podium, which shows how good these two are. How did you like the 24 hours of Daytona 2025? Let me know in the comments below and see you at the next video.